Is there any other topic? That's Longevity. It. <coughs> working. Keeping working. When, oh, yes. when, when, do you, when did you stop doing the Saturdays with Jared? When oh, yes, I know that. The permanent is soon. Oh, the permanent is uh, I think it was 71, because in 71, all right, I'm doing an improv by myself on the focus stage, and I finish. And Deirdre looks up and says, Oh, Thomas, your improvs are getting really, really very strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that, Deirdre. Yes, Thomas, they are. I see. So whatever, it, it wasn't that incident that changed me right here, but maybe it pro provoked me to expand it. Let's see if there's anything else floating around here. <laughs> so I went and was trying to look around for where else. Is there anybody else functioning at all like this, or is there anything to begin? So I said, for the moment, call him O'Brien. Mm. And then there I called Lee Gallagher. Asked me to do something. They saw me doing a uh, surreal sketch with screens, which I directed also. And there was a one-man piece in it called The Wig. And the action of the one-man piece called The Wig was that this man, blows up a balloon, he ties it to a twine around his waist, ties it around his waist, he gets a woman's panty here, you know, whatever you call it, you know they hold the, the socks, the long lady socks down, so he, he ends up in the image of, but well, he's dressed like a woman. And I have a gramophone, an old gramophone, which I still worked. Hmm. After the ball was over, after the break of day. And he's waltzing with the doll, and the balloon is the head, <laughs> and the panty holes, or whatever you call it, etc. And that's it. <laughs> That was the extent of my playwriting. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, to follow on, mm -hmm. uh, Colin O'Brien started Project 66, which turned into Project. Mm -hmm. And I was the first to do drama in the Project Gallery. We moved over the pieces of sculpture from the mid floor. Leslie Scott in the alley, it was opposite the Peacock in the Metropolitan Hall. Uh, well, where was I? Uh, move all the sculptors to three, I think it was four sketches, ending with the wing. And Colin O'Brien said, this is very interesting. Would you repeat that again in a, when I'm able to give you the space? I said, yeah, of course. So that I, it, was, it wasn't satisfactory, but it was somewhere that was, I would say, was heading in the right direction. But it's interesting when you come to think of it, it was the first trial I ever in the project. <laughs> and this lunatic having come out in one mixed up form, as it were, as they call it, I, th I, th I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. So, what happens then? Lee Gallagher writes a script, a full length. Well, there's actors speaking in it, but their voice is pre-recorded. It's called The Velvet Abattoir. It has an art exhibition with barbed wire around a typewriter. <laughs> it has three wombs with lights inside and inmates crawling around. <laughs> That's only for start. <laughs> <laughs> the Velvet Avatar. And you know what's really interesting about it? You couldn't forget this. Two big, uh, two big tape recorders, because 
I believe that sound is really very important in any drama. Two big tape recorders, reel to reel. And who's operating the tape recorders? The recorded sound. Michael Scott. True, <laughs> <laughs> <Jordan>, man. <laughs> yeah, Michael Scott. It uh, was Wagner came in and out. It was, it was truly funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so then I spent my time wandering around trying to get, I suppose, strange. Well, I, I, I did go back quite a lot to the book. So it became a routine of, uh, I'd go in by myself. Mm. Deirdre was 